Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss, I guess, the last topic of the power module 4 or this chapter. Under this we are having the two major topics that we will also discuss. So human blood substitutes. What are human blood substitutes? In the name itself it is there, it should act as a blood substitute. That means whatever synthetically you are producing the product, it should replace the blood, human blood. So that is what exactly it means. But we have not come to that point yet. Okay, a lot of research are going on. Some there were uh, you know successful studies are there, but not commercially or not practically applicable for all hospitals or uh, you know uh, available in worldwide. So human blood substitutes are synthetic products. There's nothing but we are preparing it. So that are designed to act as a replacement for the blood in the human body. It is not like for uh, where completely we are removing all blood and we are using wherever there is a requirement of blood and wherever there is no blood is uh, you know stored or uh, in blood bank sometimes the blood will not be there. During those time we can have the we can replace the, we can have this kind of blood and keep get it ready and we can use it so like that. So to do in order to do that what it should have the properties of the blood. So basic requirement of the human blood substitutes is okay, what is the property of the what are, what are the functions of the blood normal blood it will carry the oxygen. What will carry the oxygen? In the blood we are having called RBC. In RBC we are having something called hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is a protein. This will act as a you know transporter okay. It takes the oxygen okay and it reach out every part, every cell, every tissue, every organ of the body and it gives the oxygen for all the cells of the body. So that all the um, we know that every cell requires oxygen say like that. So that was the first function. So here this particular synthetic blood also has to do that proper you know task. The second task is safety and compatibility. Our blood is safe, our blood is compatible. If you are going to synthesize uh, uh, you know the substitute, blood substitute so laboratory in laboratory. So we need to make sure that it is safe and it is compatible. Safe we know all of you know need to explain about safety and compatibility in the sense since we are using it for humans which will be inside the body it should be compatible with our all the living you know systems or cells tissues or organs inside the body next to storage and transport we it should be able to store and transport the particular oxygen next cost effectiveness and scalability so it should be cost effective and you know cost effective means it should not be too costly and then scalability it should be uh, if if it is required we can we should be uh, if you if you want it to be in a bigger scale or a large scale production that should be possible so these are the basic requirements for the human blood substitutes so there are two types of the uh, human blood substitutes basically the first one is hboc second one is pfc hboc in the sense hemoglobin based oxygen carrier that means here it will act as it will just mimic the property of hemoglobin molecule. So that is why it is called hemoglobin based oxygen carrier. The whereas second perfluorocarbons that we will discuss in the next slide coming slides. So HBOs are based on the hemoglobin molecule that means it depends on the hemoglobin molecules which is a protein as I told you where it will be present in the red blood cells. What it does the hemoglobin it carries the oxygen to the all the parts of the body's tissues. Now this protein that is hemoglobin is extracted from the human or animal blood and then modify it to create stable and synthetic portion. So now we know that what is hemoglobin? We have a blood right in simple word. In blood what are there? WBC, RBC, plasma, stuff are there. Inside the RBC, RBC is responsible carrying the oxygen but what exactly present uh, in the RBC is hemoglobin that in this particular hemoglobin is a protein which carries the oxygen to the all parts of the body. Now this particular human being if you want to synthesize a synthetic uh, blood substitute so now you are going to extract this hemoglobin first okay from the human or a normal uh, animal blood then you modify it to create a stable and synthetic version right so you need to modify that that is why we are calling it as a synthetic blood substitute. Right. So when introduced inside the body, this particular blood uh, substitute, so it can help to increase the amount of oxygen available to the tissues, which can be very important in the situations where the body unable to produce enough oxygen or uh, even sometimes RBCs 
even the oxygen will be there enough oxygen will be produced sometimes e rbcs will not take this particular oxygen to the all parts of the body sometimes because if any two of these fails oxygen support drops if the oxygen support drops the person get, may, he may goes for like he may faint right so uh, what kind of situation maybe during the trauma situation or uh, during the heart attack or any other stuff wherever the oxygen is required we can use this particular uh, substitutes so they are made by isolating homo uh, hem uh, hemoglobin that we know we extracted it we isolated it, and then we have used and then the protein the uh, hemoglobin is a protein which is responsible for carrying the oxygen into, uh, in the rbc and formulating it into the solution or a suspension that can be infused into the patient's blood stream now this particular hemoglobin after isolation after modifying it okay uh, we are we, we can either keep it in as a solution or a suspension and wherever is required it can be injected or infused to the patient's blood stream advantages are there increase oxygen carrying capacity okay it carries it increases the oxygen carrying capacity universal compatibility it is compatible okay which is in your cell it doesn't have to uh, look for you know uh, a different uh, kind of uh, 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 varieties next long shelf life next reduce risk of infection and availability in remote or challenging settings so wherever there is a remote areas uh, where no much hospital hospitals are there or the facilities are not good so in those kind of remote areas also it will be helpful so limitations uh, lim uh, the first limitation is the limited oxygen release that means inadequate oxygen delivery to tissue in certain conditions not every time in sometimes what happens inadequate oxygen delivery that means it won't uh, deliver the proper oxygen uh, in certain conditions so next short half life there is a difference between uh, 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 you know what you call shelf life and uh, short half life here this means that the this particular blood carrier uh, or a substitute they may be rapidly cleared from the circulation and suddenly when it can be clear so that reducing their effectiveness and requiring more treatment doses or infusion that means if i want this substitute for a, you know for a month or a, you know for years i cannot use this so whenever there is a kind of situation i can use it because it will be taken out uh, from the bo uh, body very rapidly next nitric oxide scavenging that means we know that excessive nitric oxide scavenging by this hbos can lead to the uh, vascular construction before uh, understanding this we need to know why we are talking about nitric oxide so nitric oxide is uh, responsible for the smooth movement of the blood flow or the smooth flow of the blood in the inside the capillaries blood capillaries so if the excessive nitric oxide scavenging is there that means that is damage is done by this particular uh, uh the hemoglobin based uh, oxygen carrier what happens that can lead to the vasco sorry vaso constriction and impairing the or that means it will damage the blood flow uh to reduce the damage the, the vas vesicles so it will damage the uh, blood uh, flow that means damage in the sense it will affect the blood flow to the vital organs and potentially causing adverse cardiovascular effects if vital organs that means very important organs doesn't uh, gets blood on time that definitely it is going to affect you know uh, to the blood pumping so ultimately it will affect the it will have the cardiovascular effects that means heart heart attack related stuffs renal toxicity is one more disadvantages it it has shown a potential for renal toxicity causing damage to the kidneys because in, since it is synthetic and kidney is known for filtering the natural blood so since kidneys has to adapt for this particular this thing so there are a lot of studies where they, uh, they have showed it's just, there is a kind of toxicity in for, for to the or it can damage the uh, kidney next immunogenicity and diverse adverse reactions so what happens immunogenicity so because of this uh, this this is a synthetic blood right so that can trigger immune responses in body so when there is a immune response we have uh, in the earlier classes in the module one we have talked about what is immune system and what, what are immune responses and all so they potentially leading to the allergic reactions or other adverse events will be there 
So, we know that what is immune system? It is nothing but a defense mechanism of a human body or any organism's body. Any, every organ body will have its immune system. That means, if anything, if mosquito bites, it leaves its antigen. So, if any microbes infection is there, uh, if their antigens will be there. So, these our immune system will act as an army. So, it will provide, it will produce the antibodies and it will go and hit this particular antigen. Uh, like the how the javans hit uh, the um, enemies with the guns similarly it will go and attack and gets gets it killed so that our body will be safe okay same mechanism what uh, the defense mechanism works in the in the border of every country same mechanism your know, immune system works next regulatory challenges so we know that if any uh, anything anything new which is going inside the body Okay, like uh, it may be the drug or it may be the any kind of technological related issues are there or synthetic drugs are there, synthetic any devices are there. They have to go, uh, you know, very rigorous regulatory scrutiny. Why? Because it is, we are, it is a matter of life. So, we will check first on the animals that is called as preclinical studies where, and then followed by the clinical studies that is for humans. Remember, always remember preclinical in the sense. First, you check in on the animals. You might have seen in movies, they will take the rats, they will inject stuff, all the rest, and then if they succeed, then they go for the any, uh, humans, humans clinical, animals preclinical, right? So, like that. So, this is a complex procedure and uh, potentially risky and also requires a lot of time. So, that also comes under one of the drawbacks. So, next interference with the diagnostic stress, the next disadvantage. Definitely, since this is a synthetic blood, it interferes with certain laboratory research, for example, measuring the liver enzymes. So, next, these interferences can complicate the interpretation of the results and potentially lead to the diagnostic errors. So, sometimes what happens when there is a blood uh, uh, it is being given? So, it, give, uh, it simply increases or decreases some enzymes or some hormones inside our body. And we will think that there is some problem in liver and that will that is nothing but diagnostic error. Diagnostic error in the sense when you are detecting some disease or you are detecting some things uh, okay and if that is not proper then we are calling it as diagnostic error because diagnosis in the sense detecting the disease whereas uh, therapeutic in the sense we are treating the disease. Examples, there are examples, uh, many examples of uh, HBOs are there which is prepared by the different companies, pharmaceutical companies and all. So, Hemipure is an uh, HBOs that is made from the bovine hemoglobin, that means it is extract from the bovine hemoglobin, pro, uh, hemoglobin uh, from animal or uh, human being. So, it has been approved by the use in, uh, so approved for the use in South Africa, Russia and some other countries, not all. So, Oxyglobin, next one. So, oxyglobin is again another type of this particular uh, uh, hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin uh, uh, based uh, oxygen carrier that is made from the bovine hemoglobin again. So, it is approved for veterinary applications or use in US and has been used to treat anemia in dogs. Next, we are having hemospan. Hemospan is an again uh, uh, hemoglobin based oxygen carrier that is being developed by the uh, Sangert INC, this is one of the company. So, it is currently in clinical trials. Now, you know what is clinical trials, right? That means, currently in clinical trials means it is, it passed the preclinical trial. That means, it is, it was successful for animals. Now, they are checking it on human beings. So, and has shown promise, promise in the increase in the oxygen delivery to the tissues. So, it is uh, shown promising me in the sense that because we got a result from the preclinical that's why we are in clinical if there is no success in preclinical they will not go for the clinical so next mp4 ox mp4 ox is again uh, the blood carrier sorry that is being developed by the baxter healthcare so it is designed to increase the oxygen delivery to the tissues and also to scan in the harmful free radicals in the bloodstream now here two functions one is to deliver the oxygen that we just discussed so far. Another one is the scavenge, that means to remove this harmful free radicals. Okay, free radicals are nothing but you know in chemistry I have studied. These free radicals are very, uh, you know, what to say, dangerous for the human body. So, because of these free radicals only, we will get a lot of cancers. So, to remove these cancer, cancer uh, I mean, free radicals also, we can use. 
next hemolink hemolink is an again a blood carrier that is being developed by the hemo uh, hemosolar company and it is designed to be used in trauma and surgical settings wherever there is a trauma wherever there is a surgical settings this blood infusion can be given so that it will give the lot of oxygen transport so that the person will not run out of oxygen because the heart is not functioning properly during those time and the lot of other stuff will be there so note that many countries have not yet given regulatory approvals for clinical usage of hbos that means they are still under pre clinical study that means what they are in studying in on suturing on animals so that was about hbos hemoglobin based next we are having purpuro carbons so that is pfc so they are again also a synthetic molecule that is are similar in structure to the hemoglobin molecule there we are extracting the hemoglobin molecule from the natural uh, natural uh, either from the human being or from the animals and then we are we were doing there so here it is a purely synthetic molecule which is is resembles the structure of hemoglobin but it is not isolated from the hemoglobin so however unlike hbos they do not require modification from natural sources so pfcs are able to dissolve oxygen it will get dissolved in the oxygen then they will take transport it through the throughout the body similar to the way that rbc does advantages high oxygen carrying capacity improved oxygen solubility because since it is taking making it as soluble next stability and long shelf life no blood typing or cross matching required you don't have to go for what kind of blood type that is reduced risk of infection and transmission okay and then compatibility with diagnostic tests so limitations limited oxygen all most all the limitations what we studied for the hemoglobin you can copy paste here okay and some of the extra points are there that you just go through that is limited oxygen of uh, offloading okay the first thing there also it was there need for the specialized administration methods so this you can see as a next point so such as emulsification or encapsulation is required here because uh, it is not uh, uh, so here uh, it is not uh, completely derived from the directly isolated from this hemoglobin next short half life discussed clearance and elimination that is primarily eliminated from the body through the lungs so that is also a problem here lung infection or lung related any diseases accumulation in future we might get so that is also one of the limitation side effects and toxicity need to study properly and then regulatory consideration as to as i told you the regulatory framework is very important we are having the three major regulatory thing in one in the us that is fda then european and japan so these regulators are the major international regulatory bodies they have to say and give the approvals so it is a time consuming and complex process examples again we as we discussed uh, in the uh, uh, hemoglobin here also we pfc also we are having the some of the examples that for example for uh, for tro uh, sorry for toran so for toran is nothing but again pfc that was developed by in russia which is used in several countries including russia ukraine and china it has been used in treatment of variety of conditions including trauma heart attack and stroke okay so oxycyte oxycyte is again in a pfc is being developed by the oxygen biotherapeutic company so it is currently in clinical trials now you know what is clinical trials and has shown promising increasing oxygen delivery to the tissue in patients in traumatic brain injury it's all about delivering the oxygen the whole topic topic is all about delivering the oxygen these points will be keep on repeating okay next oxycyte pfc emulsify emulsion so this is again another pfc based blood substitute which is being developed by the again the same company that is oxygen biotherapeutics here it is designed to be used as oxygen carrier during the surgery and medical procedures so during the surgery if suddenly the person gets uh, requires blood and all we can use next hemopure pfc hemopure uh, which was also there in the previous hemoglobin based uh, oxygen carrier also so here this particular hemopure pfc here we are combining it's nothing but hybrid of both uh, hbo uh, oc and as well as perfuro for both the types so it is being developed by the hbo2 uh, therapeutics company and has shown promising increase in delivery to the tissue in pre clinical studies note that it is very important to note that while these technologies show promise they are still in development and as well as further studies are required to evaluate their safety and effectiveness we cannot simply blindly use it so that's it that's the end of this uh, chapter uh, next uh, chapter we will uh, start shortly.